Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea Anderson, and if you haven't met me before, I am our middle school pastor here at Cornerstone Livermore. I just wanna take a second to introduce myself, um, but I really do hope I get the opportunity to meet each of you this summer, if not in the coming year. So a little bit about me, I have been living in the Dublin Livermore Pleasanton area for about the last 11 years, and I just calculated that again, uh, according to my profile online here, I've been attending Cornerstone for 11 years, and I met my husband here at Cornerstone 11 years ago. We've been married for six years and have two beautiful little girls, ages two and three. And just a fun fact to share, kind of to break the ice a little bit, is I actually used to get paid to climb trees and play in the mud. So there's lots of fun stories in there. Hopefully I'll get to share a little bit with you. And what I want to do is kind of continue what our pastors have been doing over the past few weeks here. We've been talking about the masks that we wear. And I know some of them have shared about that I'm fine mask or our social media mask. And today I wanna to share with you about the chameleon mask. So. I'm assuming when you hear the word chameleon that you probably think about this guy. And actually, when I hear the word chameleon, I go straight Disney and I think of Pascal from Tangled. Um, and when we call someone a chameleon, an actual person a chameleon, what we really mean is that they change their behavior or their beliefs just to please others or to succeed. Now, in nature, the, the chameleon doesn't do that at all. It, it's more like, um, like a mood ring. Have you guys seen those before? Uh, yeah, it's like a mood ring. So it will change its color based on like its mood or temperature or how little or how much light there is. So really when we call someone a chameleon, that's probably not the best animal to associate them with. It's actually this animal, the mimic octopus. And again, my Disney Pixar friends, you might remember him from Finding Dory, and his name is Hank, which I love this character. He's so fun. And the mimic octopus is an incredible animal. It's actually so good at its camouflage skills that it wasn't even discovered until the late 1990s. And what the mimic octopus does is it doesn't just change color, it changes its shape. And this is pretty fantastic because it can imitate or mimic, for that matter, some of the most deadly creatures in the ocean. It can, it can mimic the, uh, the, the lionfish, it can mimic the poisonous flatfish, and also it can mimic a sea snake. And really, when we look at that definition of a human calling them chameleon, this animal is the best. See, I can just see Hank, that's kind of who I picture in my mind as that mimic octopus. I can see him in the ocean going, oh man, like there, there's, there's a predator coming. If I, if I just act like a sea snake right in this moment, I'll win and I will survive. If, if I can blend into the sand right now that they're gonna pass over me and they won't even notice me. Or if I can make myself look like coral, then I'll survive. See, that's what we do when we have our chameleon masks on is we actually silence who we really are. We silence who we really are just to find security. There's a story in the Old Testament about a girl, a beautiful woman named Hadassah. She's a Jewish woman and she's living in exile. When you live in exile, that means that you are not allowed to return to your home country, whether it's war-torn or political, whatever it may be. She is stuck in the Persian Empire and she's being ruled under King Xerxes or Ahasuerus. So you might have heard both, both names being told, same name. So Xerxes is this king and <laughs> He has a really poor sense of judgment, actually, and what King Xerxes does is he's been partying a lot with his friends and he's pretty intoxicated and he decides it'd be a good idea for his queen to come out and dance for him. Well, Queen Vashti is like, I'm not gonna go out there and dance for you. And her saying no, he gets 
the opinion of all of his friends, again, poor sense of judgment, and decides to strip her of her queenly title, and he no longer has a queen, just to make a point. So he gets to, uh, he kind of comes to his senses and he goes, wait a second, now I don't have a queen, what am I supposed to do? And he goes back to his, his you know, royal advisors and he's like, what do I do? And they're like, well, why don't you just like pick from like all the beautiful women in your provinces and bring them here and you can pick your bride. Of course, that sounds great. Except, see, Xerxes is the king of 127 provinces, all the way from India to Egypt to modern day Greece. It's massive. And so when we hear or read in the text, pick your bride, what that actually means is these most beautiful eligible women were being kidnapped from their homes. Now, Hadassah, this Jewish woman, see, if you were Jewish, it wasn't something you'd be proud of back then, especially if you're living in exile. It was something that probably should be concealed or hidden. And so the time was coming and her uncle Mordecai, who had been taking care of her, knew that these royal advisors with these commissioners were coming to take her to the palace. And as they came to take her to the palace, Mordecai reminds her. He tells her, you have to hide your identity. This isn't the time to be loud. This is the time to hide. And your name, Hadassah itself, is a giveaway that you are Jewish. So we need to change your name. And so she takes on the Persian name Esther. And that's the first time we read in scripture about her wearing that camouflage mask. If she's just Persian enough, she'll survive. And she learns this lesson, this lie, that there is security there is security in her silence. So she is kidnapped into her, from her home, taken to the palace with all these other women, and they have to undergo a year of intense beauty treatments before they can even go before the king. And one by one by one, they'll go before the king and he will choose who his queen is. Well, fast forward and the queen, Queen Esther now, does find favor with the king and becomes queen. And luckily, once again, you see that she has security and safety because she wore that mask, that chameleon mask, and was able to mimic and adapt and lose everything that she once was just to survive. When I, I was probably, I must have been finishing my junior year of high school, I had the opportunity to go to college. So I ended up going to Pepperdine University between junior and senior year. And it was this moment where I could discover who I truly was, find myself. And after my junior year of high school, all through senior year and all through college, I kept wanting to find myself. And I thought the best way to do that was just to meet all these different types of people who were in all different groups and find which one I fit in the best. So I had like my film crew people that I would go and hang out with and I had my hip hop dance team people that I would go and hang out with. And then I had like the really cool party people I'd try and go and dance with. And then I, I, I even had like my church campy people that we'd be all outside hiking in nature with. And I just went from every single group I could find trying to find community and I would change my clothes, I would change my hairstyle, I would change the way I talk, and I would even change my music preferences just to fit in. See, when you do that for five years, you lose who you really are, and you don't find yourself at all. And so I got to the end of my college experience, and that is essentially what happened, is I didn't have community, and I had lost myself. I didn't know who I was. And it's been 11 years since college now, and I can honestly tell you I only have one friend I still keep in touch with from those days. Because I had believed this lie that there is security in my silence. Hmm. I often wonder if, if you've experienced this before. Have you felt that? Have you felt that you need to be one person at church and, and one person when you're in sports and one person in your house and one person at school and you wear so many camouflage masks that you're just adapting or mimicking to each situation that you lose who you truly are and that mask gets harder and harder to take off. 
Let's go back to our story about Esther because a time is coming where Esther is gonna have to remove her mask. She can't wear her chameleon mask anymore or she risks not only her life, but the life of millions. See, there's this other character in the story and his name is Haman and he's a royal advisor to King Xerxes. And Haman does not like Esther's uncle Mordecai. And he learns that Mordecai is a Jew and so his, his form of getting back at Mordecai is instead of just killing Mordecai, he's gonna find a way to kill all of Mordecai's people, the Jews. Now remember, Esther is a Jew herself and she is in hiding in the palace. And so Haman goes before the king again, not a great decision maker. And Haman goes before the king and he says, hey king, there's this group of people that live in your provinces and they don't bow down to you, they don't listen to you, and they worship their own God and have their own customs, wear their own types of clothes. I, I wanna get rid of them. And the king says, well, okay, Haman, that sounds like a great idea, I'll tell you what. I'll draw up this blank decree, sign my name on it, you fill in the blank and have your way with them. Not good decision-making, King. What are you thinking? So Haman's thrilled by the idea. He takes the signed blank decree, and what he does is he fills it in, and it goes out to all 127 provinces, remember, from India to Egypt to Greece, and it says something like this. Hey, everyone, it's your king here. On July 13th, 2021, you are, have the authority to slaughter, murder, kill, and annihilate the entire Jewish people. See you soon, your king. Could you imagine the uproar in the provinces when that was being read? Imagine you yourself a Jew, the fear you must have felt not only for that day coming, but it was essentially okay for anyone in your neighborhood to find you and kill you. See, our queen is still in her camouflage mask, hiding with that chameleon face on, hiding behind palace walls. And her uncle Mordecai finds a way to communicate with her and pleads for her to do something. And he says, Esther, you have you have favor with the king. Go before him, talk to him, say something. Maybe you've come to this position for such a time as this. Tell them who you truly are. Save your people. Do you think your life will be spared? And when you've worn your chameleon mask for so long, it is hard to take off because you've tricked yourself into believing that there is security in your silence. But Esther realizes that she too will perish along with every Jew in the province. And so she makes the decision and she goes before the king and the king asks her, what is it? What is your request? And she gets ready to take off her mask but fear grips her. And she instead asks the king to attend a banquet with her that evening. So she prepares a banquet. This is her next opportunity. She can do it. She can remove that chameleon mask. And the king asks her, again, what is your petition, Esther? I'll even give you up to half my kingdom. And she gets ready to remove her mask, but it is stuck so tightly. It is her security now, and it has silenced her completely. And again, she instead wavers and says, uh, can I invite you to another banquet? And uh, How about you and me a and Haman? What about tomorrow? Let's have another banquet. And so the next day they decide to have a banquet and Esther arrives, and Haman arrives, and the king arrives, and this is her last opportunity. She has to be brave. She has 
to remove that chameleon mask. She has to stop a mass genocide from destroying her people. Let's go to the text. The king asks, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given to you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be given to you. And in chapter 7, verse 3, it says, Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition, and spare my people. This is my request. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed, and annihilated. If we, if we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I, I would have kept quiet because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. See, Esther finally has taken her mask off. And the king, King Xerxes, asks Queen Esther, who is he? Where is he? The man who has dared to do such a thing. See, she has to now believe that there is no security in her silence. That man is next to her. He's right there. She has to speak up. And Esther said, an adversary, an enemy, this vile Haman. She has named him finally. She is no longer silent. Her mask is off. The king is outraged. He leaves the table furious and Haman knows that his death certificate has just been signed. And he pleads and begs and gropes Queen Esther, praying and hoping that she will give him mercy. And when the king sees that this Haman even thinks he can come close to his queen, that he can touch her, he rips him off of her and impales Haman on a 75-foot pole in front of his own house. So the Jews are now given the opportunity to fight back. And they do indeed fight back with the favor of the king on their side and they defeat their enemies. And this mass genocide is stopped. And to this day, the Jewish people still remember this and they celebrate this holiday. And every year, the holiday is called Purim. This last year it was in February, and next year it will be in March. See, this is what happens when we remove our chameleon mask. This is what happens when we realize the truth, that there is no security in our silence. We, you, me, I, all of us, we have to be exactly who God designed us to be. We can't mimic, camouflage, chameleon ourselves any longer. See, every day that you have breath, every day that I am alive, we have to be exactly who God intended us to be from today to tomorrow for the rest of our lives because we have a purpose that only ourselves can, can fulfill. We cannot mimic any longer. We cannot be the chameleons. We have to know the truth that there is no security in our silence. Let me take a second and I'm gonna pray for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every single one of these students. I thank you for the bravery of them just being here right now. And Lord, I pray that we would each be courageous to remove our chameleon mask, our mimicking nature, and, and that we can be free to be exactly who you created us to be, Lord. Grant us that courage to be who you designed us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah.